We are literally a day or so away from 2021. All of us can't wait to see the back of the year 2020 because of the COVID situation. But as far as football goes, and Chelsea and Frank Lampard in particular, how do you think 2020 has been for us overall? Heading into the new year, this time last year, where we are now and where we find ourselves, there's a lot of conjecture, there's a lot of opinion. I'm Chel Staffed, welcome to the channel. In this video, we're going to have a look at what's happened in this past year and just have a little bit of a realistic view. If you're interested to hear more, drop a like on the video for me, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Make sure you hit the bell for notifications though, so you don't miss when my videos come out. We're going to get into this in detail. So, without further ado, let's get cracking. So I wanted to do this video because, let's face it, there's a lot of conjecture, there's a lot of negativity, there's a lot of focus on Frank Lampard at the moment, as it stands. And there's a report that's appeared yesterday in The Sun stating that Chelsea's Frank Lampard equals the worst Premier League points per game record of Chelsea managers since Roman Abramovich has been in charge. His points per game record is matched to that of Andre Villas-Boas. And there's a stat that's been brought up here, which you can see. Villas-Boas managed 27 games with just a 48 win percentage, points per game 1.7. Frank Lampard's got a 50% win percentage, that's 27 games out of his 54 Premier League games, with a points per game figure of 1.7 as well. As you can see, there's a number of managers with better records and Frank Lampard's under pressure. If you look at the reports that are going around, if you look at social media, there's a lot of conjecture about his position with people claiming that he's tactically inept. He doesn't know what he's doing. He shouldn't be in charge. He should be sacked. And it's just to try and have a little bit of a realistic view on everything that's happening and everything that's happened in the year 2020 as we head into the new year and to see where we find ourselves. And all I'll say right now is have a little bit of perspective. Let's not jump the gun. Now, I will be talking about defeats and stuff like that. It's not a biased opinion. It's just an opinion as me, a Chelsea fan, video content creator, giving you. So we come into the year 2020 and we just had our transfer ban lifted. Bearing in mind we missed the summer transfer window because we were banned and we brought the youngsters from the academy in to the first team. It was an ideal opportunity for Chelsea to invest in the squad and try and make one or two changes. It didn't happen for whatever reason. Frank looked to be frustrated, but it didn't happen. So we pretty much were left with a squad that we started this season with. Um, and let's be honest, when Frank Lampard took over, he spoke of the fact that there was a winning mentality at the club. And his appointment would indicate there's a change of perspective, there's a change of, of priorities, that there's a change of tact in regards to Frank being appointed. He's been appointed as part of a project and it's something that we can then build towards. He spoke of the likes of Jurgen Klopp and Pep Guardiola having three, four, five seasons to get their squads together to then challenge for the top. And he urged Chelsea fans that it's probably going to take that long to do the same. He also said to Chelsea fans, if you remember rightly, there will be bumps along the road. Last season, there was bumps along the road. There was good moments, fantastic moments, disappointment last season at times. And the transfer window was one of them in January. Chelsea, though, regrouped. Frank Lampard and the Chelsea players were doing well. Coronavirus hit. We never knew if the season was going to be finished. The players were working at home trying to stay fit. They come back on Project Restart. With Olivier Giroud in inspired form, Chelsea managed to get fourth place, a Champions League qualification. When Frank Lampard first took over, bearing in mind the transfer ban, losing Eden Hazard and bringing the youngsters in, we said that if we could finish top six, that would be a good season. We finished fourth. And that was outstanding. It was above and beyond what we all thought we could probably achieve. Tammy Abraham's goal-scoring record last season was, was a bonus. It's probably what we didn't expect. And there was a real positive end to the season with Frank Lampard's stewardship, with the players responding, and Chelsea got a fourth-place finish and qualified for the Champions League, which was just outstanding. So coming into this season, Chelsea have spent a lot of money, as we all know. 
We needed six positions in our squad to be strengthened. If you look at Man City and Liverpool, they've probably only had one or two per season. They're looking at strengthening in the era of Guardiola and Klopp. It's never been, let's go out and buy six players. Chelsea's squad was short of numbers. We need a left back, new goalkeeper, new centre back. We need another midfielder. We need a striker. We need another winger. It was clear that there needs to be investment made in the squad. And Chelsea made a decision to go out and spend a lot of money, much more than anybody else, to bring those players in to work with Lampard and the project going forward. Big money was spent on the likes of Kai Havertz, record signing around 75 million. Timo Werner, big money. Hakim Ziyech was already done and dusted. Ben Chilwell was big money. Edouard Mendy at the time seemed to be a snip at around 22 million, which was brilliant. Thiago Silva on a free transfer. Everything seemed to be looking good. And the transfer window was a huge success. It gave everybody at the club a massive, massive lift. And more importantly, the supporters. Coronavirus has played havoc with everything. With a normal season, the build-up, the planning, the pre-season fitness, it's all gone out the window. And as a result, we've seen varied performances from Chelsea this season. I've put in some really good performances as well. 16 games in all competitions unbeaten. Started off with with con- just conceding goals left, right and centre. Something had to be done about that, despite the players that were coming in. But Thiago Silva was working back to being fully fit, having a little bit of a break, because let's not forget, he played the Champions League final against Bayern Munich. He needed time to come in. Ben Chilwell was injured. He, he joined the club injured, trying to get fit and trying to get involved. Hakim Ziyech was injured in, in the one game we played against Coventry. And he's come back in and he's been struggling with injuries ever since. And that's a fact. People are talking about the fact that Timo Werner's not scored for 11 games. All 11 games he's probably played, or I'd say 10 out of the 11, he's played as a wide player. That's not his natural position. He's filling in to do a job. Kai Havertz has been talked about being as someone who's struggling. He doesn't fit into a 4-3-3 formation for me. He's not a box-to-box midfielder. He's a number 10 in a 4-2-3-1. But we're not playing that formation. So he's trying to adjust to that tactical shape in addition to the Premier League, in addition to the pace and physicality, which is what he's spoken about already earlier in the season. He's been filling in in different positions for us, trying to do a job for us. It's going to take him time to settle down and to adjust to be in that box-to-box midfielder with more emphasis on getting back in and helping out defensively without the ball, which is something he never really had to do in Germany. The rise of Rhys James, as Pelicuetas had to play second fiddle. That's been an important point to note this season. Kurt Zuma's made the position next to Thiago Silva his own, leaving Fakao Tomori, Andreas Christensen and Tony Rudiger out the team. Rudiger's not been happy and he's spoken to Frank Lampard about things had an open and honest conversation and he still can't get in the team because Zuma and Thiago Silva for the most part have been good. Eduard Mendy's coming and impressed everybody. His kicking and his distribution at times just worries me, but his shot stopping, handling is great and he's a positive in addition to the likes of Reese James, Thiago Silva and Ben Chilwell. We've had N'Golo Conte been out for a period, but he's come back in and we're beginning to see N'Golo Conte back to his best. Jorginho's found himself out of the team because he's having to play second fiddle. In the 4-3-3 formation with Frank Lampard, the front, the, the strongest three is easy. It's N'Golo Conte, Matteo Kovacic and Mason Mount in that deeper position. That's the strongest three that we've got with the likes of Billy Gilmore, Jorginho and Kai Havertz fighting for a position. In the wide areas, Callum hudson odoi has been in. He's also missed a few games, but he's been back. He's been involved and he's done well for the most part this season. So to Christian Pulisic, who was the highlight of last season, one of the big, big pluses of last season. As we all know, he ripped his hamstring in the FA Cup final. It was a bad one. He's been battling back. He come back and got himself fit. Then he blew up again and 
missed the opportunity to come back into the team. Pulisic has been out, but hopefully he's back. He's been playing the last few games and looks like he's getting back to his best. But he's been out for a whole period of time. Tammy Abraham and Olivier Giroud have been fighting for that start and both have been scoring goals and playing well. Giroud is the main man for me at the moment. Tammy doesn't do enough as a link man or use his height or his physicality enough, i.e. the likes of Arsenal. Giroud, as I say, Giroud and Abraham both scoring goals. But I've seen some comment and I've seen Talk Sport and they're talking about the fact that Chelsea have got a young squad. Yes, there's been some more experienced additions into that squad, but overall it's a young squad that's going to grow and develop together. The nucleus of this squad are playing together. With the new players coming in, they need time to adjust, to adapt, to learn how each other plays while you're still going through this hectic schedule with no pre-season. So to the Premier League table, Liverpool top on 32 points, Man United is second on 30, then comes Leicester and Everton on 29, and three points behind those two are ourselves, Aston Villa, Tottenham, Man City and Southampton, but those clubs have got some games in hand. So what have Chelsea's results and performances so far this season? Taking you back to the games we've played so far, and remember the important point, no pre-season. The players are literally doing a pre-season as they're playing Premier League football. We beat Brighton opening day, then lost to Liverpool the following weekend, 2-0, having been down to 10 men after Andreas Christensen was sent off, if you can remember. West Brom was a really disappointing performance, being free down, to fought and fighting back to 3-3. Then we followed up by beating Crystal Palace 4-0. We then drew disappointing game again against Southampton, who appeared to be our bogey team. And then drew with Man United 0-0. We beat Burnley 3-0 away. Sheffield United 4-1 at home. Beat Newcastle away 2-0. Drew with Spurs 0-0. Beat Leeds 3-1. And then we lost to Everton 1-0, which in a pretty blunt performance, it has to be said. The real eye-opening one was the Wolves game recently. We were 1-0 up and cruising. We then switch off and concede two goals late in the game and lose it. We then bounce back with a good performance against West Ham, beating them 3-0. We then lose to the Arsenal in a disappointing performance again where we give away stupid mistakes and stupid goals. But we come back against Aston Villa in the recent game, drawing one all, And it was a better performance than what we saw against the Arsenal with a rotated team. So, as I say, we find ourselves sixth in the Premier League with three points off of third place. Man City and Tottenham are, are level with us, but behind us on goal difference. We've got a much better goal difference with the third highest scorers in the Premier League so far. And now at the top six, we've got the second best defensive record, having only conceded 18 goals compared to the likes of Man United who've conceded 23, Liverpool and Leicester who have conceded 20 each. This season has been a season that's just unlike any other because of the COVID situation. Shutting football down at the end of last season, we never knew if it's going to come back. It looks as though it's going to shut it down again for a period of time, whether it's going to be two weeks or a month in January. We have to wait and see. Everyone's had to deal with it to try and to come to terms with it, to try and work around it. And the schedule for the players has just been hectic. It's been unbelievably hectic. And you've seen the injuries that you see now, which is just unreal. Chelsea have never had a fully fit squad, everyone available, over a period of time in this season. And... You have to wonder and you have to ask yourselves the question, am I judging Chelsea now too harshly? Am I being, am I actually right in what I'm saying? Am I being honest? Am I being, is it right for me to be critical or is it too soon to judge? Frank Lampard's record is there in black and white, 50% win percentage, 27 wins in 54 games and it needs to be improved. You look at Chelsea and you can see there's going to be improvement when everyone gets fit. And Frank Lampard can pick his, his strongest 11. Look at the likes of Man City. Look at the likes of Liverpool. When they're fully fit and they're playing their strongest 11, you see them week in, week out. Maybe one or two changes and that's it. Chelsea have never had the opportunity to do that with the strongest players in their team available. And that's something to cling on to and to hold on to. And that's what I think the Chelsea board are doing. This is a project for Chelsea. This is different to what we've had before. We're investing in the squad. They're backing Frank Lampard to start a project. And we're looking for, the, for this season to improve our position to where we were last year, to close the gap on the top two. Next season to go again and hopefully challenge for that top two position. And then you're looking at challenging for the title. 
It's not just going to be spend 220 million or whatever it was and challenge straight away. The 16 game unbeaten run in all competitions was good. It gave us confidence, but as people have pointed out, we didn't actually beat anybody in the top 10 or 12. So it's something that needs to be considered. We need to be realistic with it. There's no point reacting and saying, oh, you know, we need to get Thomas Tuchel in. The guy's just been sacked from PSG because he's failed at PSG to deliver targets that were set for him immediately. What is the point of sacking Frank Lampard now, bringing Thomas Tuchel in? Are you then going to give him the same amount of time or are you going to give him a longer period? Stick with a person that knows Chelsea inside out, that feels Chelsea, that bleeds Chelsea and that knows what it takes to build a title-winning team and hopefully a dynasty going forward. I respect Frank Lampard as a manager and what he's trying to do. Yes, there's frustrations and bumps along the way. It's just something that, that's going to happen in this unbelievable season and unbelievable circumstance that we find ourselves in. Let's just not jump on this bandwagon about sacking him because I don't think anybody else is going to come in and do any different, bearing in mind the circumstances we find ourselves in. Yes, his record does need to improve. If he loses another two, three, four games, then he is under pressure and it needs to be looked at, definitely. He, need, he needs to understand that there's a level of expectation and if Chelsea find themselves having finished fourth this se last season with, with the academy boys in the squad to spending that amount of money, if we're then going to finish lower down the table, there is going to be added pressure. I don't think Chelsea, the Chelsea board's going to react I don't think the Chelsea board will sack Frank Lampard. I think that will be the ultimate worst case scenario. I just think we need to give everybody time. The players that have come in time, those that are struggling, give them time to adapt and adjust. Give Frank time to get his fully fit and strongest 11 together. And then after they've played 10, 12 games together, then we can judge Frank and the Chelsea team as to how far we've come this season compared to last season. That's just my opinion. I understand people have got different opinions to me. Put your comments in the comments section below. I want, you to, I want you to tell me realistically how you rate Chelsea's 2020 and Frank Lampard's 2020 in particular. If you like the video, drop a like on the video for me. Then subscribe to the channel, but make sure you hit the bell for notifications so you don't miss when my videos come out. As I say, I'm just trying to be realistic. I'm just trying to be someone that's aware that the record's not great for Frank, but can see that there's going to be light at the end of the tunnel, just trying to match it up and balance it out. Let me know what you think about Frank and Chelsea in the comments section below. As I say, drop a like, subscribe. Thank you so much for watching. See you all tomorrow.